Adversary path analysis is the basic technique used to analyze the security system, and in these slides, we will describe how to analyze a single direct path. In the big picture of the depot methodology, single path analysis is a technique used to analyze and evaluate the physical protection system design. Earlier in this course, we explained that the depot process is based on performance data and that the probability of attack is not a measurable value. We will now make a substitution into the risk equation and define the effectiveness of the security system as the product of the probability of interruption and the probability of neutralization. The probability of neutralization was described in the previous section and is the probability that the adversary is neutralized given that they are interrupted. To calculate risk, we therefore need to be able to calculate the probability that the adversary is interrupted. We calculate the probability of interruption by employing pathways analysis. Pathways analysis requires the adversary to traverse a specific path from a starting point, which is typically off-site, to a target on-site. The path is made up of a set of tasks that the adversary must complete to reach the target. Each task can be assigned an amount of time and probability of detection based on detection and delay characteristics of the protection system as well as characteristics of the adversary as defined in the design basis threat. Before we get into analyzing pathways, we will need to define some commonly used terms. The first is timely detection, which refers to detection that occurs early enough along an adversary's path so that the remaining adversary task time is greater than the time it takes for the response force to respond. Another term is the critical detection point, which represents the last element along the adversary path where timely detection can occur. Finally, we will define the probability of interruption as the accumulation of timely detection probabilities along a path. Calculating the probability of interruption is similar to calculating the total detection probability of multiple complementary sensors. We will use the non-detection probability of each detection point before the critical detection point, which is the probability that the adversary is not detected at each of these points. We can then multiply all of these together to get the probability that the adversary is not detected up to the critical detection point. Detection after the critical detection point is not included because the response force will not have enough time to respond to alarms at these sensors. The probability of interruption, which is the probability the adversary is detected before the CDP, is then simply 1 minus this value. Now we'll go through an example pathway to demonstrate how to calculate the probability of interruption. In the table, you can see a list of tasks with their associated task times and detection probabilities. In the middle column, we have the total amount of time remaining for the adversary to complete their attack after they complete each task. The first step is to find the critical detection point. For this, we need the response force time, which is signified by RFT at the bottom of the table and has a value of 200 seconds. Now look at the time delay remaining column and notice that after penetrating the wall, there is only 105 seconds left in the adversary's attack path. This means that if the adversary is not detected before completing this task, the response force will not be able to respond in time to stop them. The last point of timely detection is therefore before the adversary reaches the wall. We can now determine the probability of interruption using the non-detection probabilities for the first four tasks. The calculation is shown at the bottom of this slide and results in a non-detection probability of 0.28812. PI is just the inverse of this and is therefore 0.712. This means that the guard force has a 71.2% chance of interrupting the adversary if the adversary chooses to take this path. On the next few slides, we will change some parameters of the protection system and show how this affects the value of the probability of interruption. In this table, we have the same pathway, but have added a better detector to the outer door. This does not affect delay times and therefore has no effect on the critical detection point, but it changes the non-detection probability to 0.1729. Thus, this detector upgrade has improved the probability of interruption from 0.712 to 0.827. In this table, we again have the original pathway, but this time have added protection at the pump, which has increased the delay from 35 seconds to 140 seconds. Referencing the time remaining column, this upgrade changes the critical detection point to before running to the inner door. As a result, the detection elements up to this task are included in the interruption probability, which changes the non-detection probability to 0.0706, 
and the interruption probability to 0.929. In this table, we again have the original pathway, but have improved the response force time from 200 seconds to 80 seconds. Similarly to increasing the delay at the pump, this shifts the critical detection point to before the inner door is breached. Because we include all detectors up until the critical detection point, this upgrade yields the same result as the previous example, giving a non-detection probability of 0 0.0706 and a probability of interruption of 0.929. In summary, the probability of interruption is used to determine the effectiveness of the security system along with the probability of neutralization. We quantify it using detection and delay elements of the security system as well as characteristics in the design basis threat. The probability of interruption can be improved in a number of ways. By adding or improving detection before the critical detection point, increasing delay after the critical detection point, or decreasing the time it takes for the response force to respond. The analysis techniques presented here analyze a single pathway. For a facility, there are a number of possible pathways that must be analyzed simultaneously. The technique for doing this will be introduced in the next section. However, the pathway analysis techniques presented in these slides are the basic concepts used when doing a multipath analysis.